but Mark Tillia on the other. There's my back three. But what we have to do... But you keep saying you don't want to play people out of position. No, and I'm not playing him out of position. He's a, he can well and truly do the job. But more importantly for me, he gets these guys need to get touches. Not two, three, four touches in games. They've got to touch the ball ten times. We saw Mark Tillier on the weekend. That's exactly what he did, didn't he? Touched it how many times? Yeah. How many and tries did he score? Yeah. <laughs> Touched it four times and scored four tries, and that's why he is our Musashi Power Player of the Weekend. Four tries in 80 minutes, Mills. You've done it before. This guy's sensational. Well, he made this look easy. Three defenders, I mean, standing start. Admittedly, a couple of guys went too high. But his ability to get up in the air as well and chase kicks. This is what I love about him, you know. He, he senses where they are and he gets in a really good position to get a bit of height. Um, and watch this here. It makes I people mean, look silly. Left footstep. Four <laughs> guys. See you later. <laughs> Over he goes. Oh, no. Oh. I spoke to someone in the Blues and they said he can stop and restart the fastest as anyone in the team. And you can see that when, he, when the, with that's happening. I mean, it was a bit of a comedy at times, eh, what was happening. But here, his acceleration. I, I think what I said last night is... I was surprised last November, Goldie, we're in the Northern Hemisphere following them. I expected to see Talia as a slight, fast man. <laughs> what I saw was actually this powerful athlete. And I think when you see him, his speed is deceiving. The ability for him to stop on a dime is deceiving, but also his strength. And I think he's worked hard on that. So for me, he is the full package at the moment. This is games like that in the conditions is when you notice guys and how powerful they are because your leg drive is really important when you're out in the, in the wings because you don't want to get knocked backwards. He showed his power and um, man, that's standing start and the speed and the skill. Not to be outdone, yes, you've scored four tries in a game for the Blues. You've scored eight tries in a game, haven't you, JK? Ran fairly shield. North, North Otago. Otago. <laughs> you were losing yeah. after three or four minutes, though. They had your yeah, number. Yeah, the first yeah, three or four my wing as well. That's why I was... Was it your wing? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for reminding me, God. I, I just remember it vividly. I remember it. Because I remember the commentator at the time, this could be the biggest upset in Ramfordy <laughs> Shield history. And what happened? You guys won 100 and... Something like that. To four. four tries. To four. Oh, it was one try. <laughs> you scored five in a game as well, Jeff. Uh, you Fiji at um, Albany Stadium. Actually, funnily enough, at the time, uh, Mark Ellis holds the record for six tries in a test match. He got that in 1995. He was at that game in the stand yelling at the guys not to pass me ball to the ball or the coaches to sub me off. And I didn't get another touch for the last 20 minutes. No way. Yeah. Yeah. That's all right. It's all right, Mertz, I forgive you. No problems. <laughs> well, to go back to Mark Talia, you said you're picking him on the left wing for you. Right wing. You're, you're, he's on the right wing. Yep. Is he on the right wing starting for the All Blacks right now? Yes. So how do all these guys fit in the picture <laughs> then? If you're saying he's on the right wing, where do you play Will Jordan? Where do you play Bowden Barrett? Where does Damien McKenzie fit into the mix? What is your back three looking like? <sighs> Pretty tough. Pretty tough positions to pick. And that's, that's what I mean. I, I, I'm not really... I mean, I'd still love to see Bowden out there, like at, at, at fullback. I think Jordan, you definitely, regardless of where he, his name goes on first. Um, but I'd love to see uh, Bowden Barrett out the back, Talia on the other, on the other wing. Um, I've got no doubt we've got guys that are world beaters. It's just how we're going to play. You know, how are we going to play? Man, our talent, and it, there's no doubt in my mind that we've got the talent. It's just how are we going to play this, this game? Good JK, problems I'll to have. You, I'll ask you this, though. We can't, I don't think we can beat South Africa at their game. We can't beat Ireland the way that they play. We don't play like other sides. We don't play like France. We have to have our own style and how we win games. And I, I just look at the group and go, you know what, I think we've got to be courageous. We've got to have the ability and willingness to play with the ball. And like I said, we've got to get the ball into the hands of our guys who can break open a game, who can keep the ball alive, and you give them a licence to play, the freedom to play. If we do that... We'll maximise our talent and take it away from the opposition. Because I think if we try and defend our way to a Rugby World Cup, I don't think we win. Yeah, I, I think um, I'm a little bit worried about the fitness as well. And I don't think it's anyone's fault. I just think that it's such an anaerobic game. When you see the boys after seven or eight rucks, they're, they're really blowing. So um, that's probably too late to do. I'm worried about the predictability of our pods. Um, 
I saw the Hurricanes last night go through 12 phases, quite predictable, defence just getting up and bashing them to the ball knocked, got knocked out. So, you know, for me, I don't disagree. Do we look at a bit more of a wide-wide type game? I know we've got to earn the right up front. I mean, if you saw the European Cup final, that was brutal in the second half. The French have some big power forwards, so the best thing to do with them is to run them around. But I'm, I'm, I'm confident, we've got to be confident that the current coaching staff have kept some of those things up their sleeve and we're going to bring them out. When you think about wide, what you spoke about, good question, Kirsty, and I'll ask it. So Barrett, um, Jordan, Talia, at the moment on form, you know, you probably put Jordan there because Barrett's not playing. You might add someone else in there. Far Nuku, you probably can't go past at the moment. Are they going to take him? Are they going to take him? They're good problems to have. Now, if you go back, there's another question that I'll pose to you guys. Are we going to take experts? in their position or are we going to continue to take guys that can cover a couple of positions? And I think that's something that the selecting... Who have you got doubts in then? Who have you got doubts about not being an expert in their position? Uh, well, for me, it's probably... What are you going to do at first five? So you take Moana. Yeah, but Barrett's take... an expert first five. He was first five for the All Blacks. So how many teams? OK, he's also an expert fullback. But you go, we're not going to take him as a first five. We're going to take him as a fullback. So you take Moana and you take... McKenzie? Totally. You don't think McKenzie? So I, yeah. I think it's comfortable. We've got so much versatility, but it's not to say that they're not experts in their positions. I, I, I don't have any issues with that. I mean, the, the one thing well, is... specialists then, maybe not experts. Absolutely, speci specialists. specialists. I mean, let's define Anuku as a prime example for me. Now, now there's the rumours he's going to France that shouldn't affect his selection for the All Blacks this year. Why his not? His form shows it. Because, bottom line, he, he's playing and he's okay. available and Him, him, him Talia? I don't need to. I can fit both oh, of them in the right. squad. But we can't. Not you can't. At least we can. You can't. A hundred percent we can. There's plenty of space. He's versatile, Mills. You've got to put Bryce Heem. He was playing singer. Uh, Bryce Heem just got a mention. <laughs> yeah, I knew he Bryce Heem was going to get a mention, but I'm Lisa's sorry. He's at centre here. Yeah, but he's That's at right. centre here. That's the versatility we're talking about. But this guy's. Narara. Narawa. There's room for him as well. There's a number of guys. Well, you're like just not taking any forwards, mate. I like exactly. it. That's why we right. invented exactly. sevens. That's why they invented sevens. I love that saying. I look at this. I want guys who can keep the ball alive. Who can, who can keep the ball in play. Talia does that. Fanga Nuku does that. Will Jordan do that? That does that. David Harvili does that. The skill set in that. I we don't get want it, people mate. dying with the to, ball. Get back to answering the mixed question. What do you mean the mixed? We get that. I think someone has to miss out. Who has to miss out then? I don't know. I didn't know. I'm asking Goldie. <laughs> well, who's, look, at the moment, there are a number of players who have been in the all-black jersey, <laughs> and you would have to say honestly that Caleb Clark right now is he playing better than the other players we've talked about? He has to prove it. Right. Yeah, I know he's signed. There's no issue with that. But so has Lester Fainanuku so for this was, season. If Caleb Clark and Fainanuku are playing the same type of rugby, do you take they the contract They don't play the same play? game. I, I, don't, I think if, if you look at the two players and the makeup of the squad, Fainanuku goes because Caleb only plays on the wing. So you're not worried that he's going to France? No, I think he picked the best player. You picked the best no, player. It's just a question. It's in an interesting of, one. It doesn't matter whether he's going overseas or not. You know, if, we, if you look back and go, is Dan Carter going overseas after the Rugby World Cup? Well, you'd still pick him. This is a similar situation where if he's the best player, you pick him. You're always asking us to be professional. Be professional. He's a contracted player to New Zealand rugby. I said if they're both the same. I said if you think they're both the same from a selection point of view. Oh. If you think that one player's way better, easy. But if two players Different are players. equal, you're thinking, mm, OK. Different players. Right? Are they equal for you right now, JK? Caleb Clark and Lester Whanganuku. I think Lester's playing better. Right, there's your answer. Uh, you can keep debating this, but the Rugby Championship squad, as we're being told, will be 36 players, so three more than the Rugby World Cup squad. We've taken a look at it and thought, what are the positions that potentially they'll take, take an extra man in? Mills, for you, what is it? Where do they need to see a few extras? Well, I think props is our biggest issue at the moment, you know, given the injuries that the Crusaders have, have sort of faced. I've gone all six, um, you know, six, six props. Um, I've gone four. Four on the on the um, on the locks because I think I think we bolster up that that sort of Lucy de department. You have a couple of um, Lucy Blackadder for me still goes. I know he's been injured. Um, I think he goes, but I'll, I'll go back to the props. I think Lomax, De Group, Ross. Williams Ainsley, I think, has had a big shift this year for the Highlanders. You know, for a team that's been struggling, his, his scrummaging has been pretty outstanding. And then you've got the likes of Ofo Tuinga Fassi, um, Moody's. Uh, we think he might be back eight weeks. It's a pretty long time. Lola and obviously Angus 
those guys will probably be fought for me will fight out the last the last spot in the six three hookers I'm sure you guys would all agree with the three hookers and then hang on three no hookers, actually JK. so tell me your third oh yeah I've bracketed you can't have a bracket in a squad when they name a team well I, you know Coles has been out for a long time so I would have had old Moore last night I think his line outs probably let him let him down and that's that's where I'm like ah oh, man um so I'm a little bit iffy there at the moment so oh, I took out and Taylor at the moment for me definite the line-out thing is a real challenge for me when you look at line-outs that are failing and not quite working. There's so many pieces of the puzzle yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. It's calling, it's lifting, it's jumping. It's not the responsibility. And I think they lost their way, and he suffered because of that, because all of a sudden, I think Asafa was almost second-guessing his own throws. And he's actually looking at it going, they've got that covered. And that happened down in Dunedin it's, as well. So you, would, you take I, would you I take it? Would you take it? I get that, Goldie, but the selectors I, will go, can we trust him? under pressure, yep. and they have to answer yes or no. Can you trust Dane Coles under yes. pressure? Yes. Yep. Can we trust them more right now? And I don't know whether whether they think like this, but after last night, there's a massive question mark, and they'll have to ask themselves those questions. Hard. Loose forwards is another one, right, Kirsty? Massively. Yep. Our Gillette head-to-head -head for today is the Chiefs number eight against the Blues number eight. Hoskins a 2-2 against Luke Jacobson. Can you take both of these players, Jeff? You've got the man with all style against the hard worker. Look at Luke Jacobson's stats over 80 minutes. Yes, I can, because they're both playing, and they're both out there performing, and I'm going to pick players who are playing. So you're I'm not going to... I'm picking both of these and you're guys. And Jacobson... And at the moment, Ethan Blackadder, I haven't seen him out on the field and I haven't seen him doing and dominating like he's done in the past. This guy's going out there and showing some really nice touches. And at the moment, our options at number eight are a little bit limited. 